Before a sensor can be used, you first have to enable the control hierarchy. If the control hierarchy is not enabled, a presence sensor cannot be configured. Let me show you an example. Here you can see I have one sensor configured. I'll open sensors. I have a presence sensor configured, so if I select it, you'll see that the top option, presence sensor, cannot be selected. It's greyed out. And that's because I don't have control hierarchy enabled. So we'll go to network setup, control options, and we'll enable use control hierarchy. For now, we'll select done. Go back to the sensor. You'll see that the option for presence on sensor is no longer grayed out. If I select knock and not in use, I can actually select various other things right now. However, you'll see that the options for presence, presence absence, and absence are still grayed out. So let's cancel that. The reason they are grayed out is because my network does not currently have any scenes. So let's quickly create a scene. We'll call this scene Presence. I select my luminaire and I'm going to leave the dimming at 100% and done. If I now go back to my sensor, you'll see that I'm now able to control the presence, presence absence and absence sensors. So going back to the control hierarchy options, you'll see if you select more information, this is an explanation of how each of the different sensor options works. Below that you have manual control behavior. For that you have three options, always timeout, timeout if automation waiting, and don't timeout. A brief explanation of these are always timeout means any manual control will eventually timeout. Timeout if automation waiting means if the particular luminaire or group of luminaires are being controlled by either a timer or a sensor, they will timeout only if they're being controlled. A luminaire which is not being controlled by a timer or a sensor will not time out. The final option, don't time out, is pretty self-explanatory. Once manual control takes over, it will never time out. It will always remain on until somebody manually turns off the luminaire. An a slightly deeper explanation of those uh, options will be in the next video when we talk about advanced code control hierarchy. Next option is manual control fade out time. So once manual control call comes to an end, for this example, there will be a period of 10 seconds when it fades to either off or to the current automated state. The final options are manual control timeouts. It's these options which select how long manual control will override any sensor or timer input. I select the first one. You can choose when daytime starts and ends. Then you can select different manual timeouts for the daytime and the nighttime. The default settings are two hours for the daytime, 30 minutes for the evening. It's possible to change this. For example, let's take 10 minutes for the day. And using the option at the bottom, use these settings for the whole week, allows me to copy that same setting to every single day of the week. I'll now select done. So to add a present sensor, we'll go to my nearby devices. There you can see at the very top I have a present sensor, which I will add. Here you can see a basic PIR sensor. I think I bought these from eBay for maybe 10 euros, 10 pounds, roughly. I then have my CBUTD, which I'll configure as a presence sensor. One important thing to remember that when configuring a sensor like this, it's often best to set the time manually first on the presence sensor. 
and then possibly set a linger time of maybe one second or five seconds on the actual Kasambi configuration. Therefore, you're predominantly altering the linger time using the physical button on the sensor. The way it actually works is power is supplied to the sensor. You have the line input and the neutral input. Then you have a switchable line output from the sensor, which is the red wire. That then goes to the input of the TED. The neutral wire is never switched. It's always permanently connected. Therefore, what's happening is when, trigger, when triggered, the sensor powers up the CBU TED, which in turn triggers the sensor. In my nearby devices list here, you can see that I have a CBU TED. So I need to change profile and I'm going to select the TED presence profile. I start update. As you can see, I have the wire configuration connected to the sensor. So it's important that the sensor remains triggered while you update the profile. Now that the CBU TED has been configured as a presence sensor, I can add it to my network. And you'll notice now that it correctly no longer appears as a luminaire, but in fact now appears as a sensor, as it should. However, it doesn't call itself a sensor. It uses the smart switch option. So we'll go in and we'll select presence so that it acts as a presence sensor when powered on. The other options are exactly the same as before. As you can see in the video, I have one luminaire in my network currently and my sensor. If I wave my hand in front of the sensor, you'll see that uh, a walking icon appears over the sensor to show that the, um, that particular center is, sensor is being triggered. However, it's not configured to actually turn any lights on yet. So let's configure it. We're going to take the first option, which is simply a presence sensor. We'll choose my presence scene, which will set the lights on to 100% dimming level. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to change the linger time to 10 seconds and fade time to one second. What that means is once the sensor has finished detecting presence, the linger time will then start. Once the linger time has ended, the fade time will then start. So there are three stages. The time, first stage is the time at when people walk underneath the sensor and trigger it. The second stage is when the people have walked away and there is no longer any presence, at which time the linger time starts. The third stage is the fade time. Once the linger time has ended, the fade time starts. There is a final option for, to remove manual control but we'll leave that turned off for now. I'll now resume automation by pressing the A in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. That should turn the light off as it's no longer under, not currently under control because the sensor is turned over and cannot see any presence. So as expected, the light slowly starts to go out. When I lift the sensor, it will see me and trigger the light. If I continue to put my hand in front, you'll see the red light trigger light comes on. If I then turn it over, eventually the sensor will stop seeing presence and the linger time will start. So the light, now the light should go out in roughly 10 seconds. And it did. The next option is presence absence. The way presence absence works is the presence scene and absence scene must control the same group of luminaires. It's not possible to control one set of luminaires for your presence scene 
and a different set of luminaires for your absence scene. The idea is that a presence scene may set this, the luminaire to 100% and an absence scene may set the same luminaires to 20% for example. So let's do that in our example. I'll first go to scenes. I'm going to copy this same scene by holding it down. You'll see that there's now a number 2 at the end of the name. But I shall change it. I'm going to call it absence. And go back. I'm also going to change the dimming level to 20%. That's actually a little bit too low for the camera, so let's maybe move it to. Let's go with 50%, or roughly 50%. And then we'll select Done to save it, and Done again. So now I have two scenes. I'll go back to the Sensors option, select my sensor, select Presence. But now I'll select Presence Absence. So now we have the two individual options for the Presence and Absence scenes. It's kept my original presence scene, which I want, but now I'm going to add my absence scene, which will give me 50% when there is no movement. I'll keep the same linger time of 10 seconds and the same fade time of 10 seconds. So I'll select Done and go back. If I now trigger the sensor, my presence scene comes on at 100%, and it will stay on until absence is detected. So to create absence, let's turn the sensor back over. The luminaire should now drop to roughly 50%. And now it's dropped to 50%, which is the absence scene. If I re-trigger the sensor, it will go back to 100%. The absence option doesn't actually control luminaires, it simply waits for an absence within the room. I'll select my presence scene. I have the same length of time of 10 seconds and a fade time of 1 second. What this actually means is, if somebody comes into a room, manually turns on the lights, the sensor will then wait until absence is detected. At that point it will check whether the linger time has passed or not, in this case 10 seconds. If the linger time has passed and absence is detected, or no presence is detected, the sensor will then turn off the presence scene. Let me demonstrate that for you. The sensor is now in absence only control. Let's presume that I walk into a meeting room with my colleagues and I turn the light on. We now have a meeting for a while. We constantly move around the room, giving presentations. However, the meeting is now ended. We leave the room. I forget to turn the lights off. So what happens is the presence sensor waits for absence. It then must wait for the 10 seconds linger time to pass, and it will then turn the lights out. The red light has now gone out. and the 10 seconds passed and it turned off the light. So it's a way of automating turning lights off if people forget to turn them off themselves. You notice that I previously used the A button at the bottom left hand corner for automation. Pressing that button will automatically resume automation for everything in the entire network. Although I only have one luminaire here, if I manually control it up and down, if I select automation, it removes manual control and turns the light off because nothing is tr triggering the, or nothing ring is automating that light right now. As I mentioned, that affects the entire network. There may be a reason when you only want to resume automation for a specific group of luminaires. 
So let's first create a group. Although it only has one light in it, that's okay. Let's presume that I had more luminaires in my network though. And I only wanted to resume automation for this particular uh, luminaire. As you can see, I've opened the group. The A button is still visible in the bottom left hand corner. But because I have the group open, and I press A, it will only resume automation for the luminaires in that particular group. If I had any more luminaires in my network, it would not affect any of those, so they would remain under manual control.